Well, Jill Glover started dancing at the end of the sound poems and danced throughout Allen Ginsberg's set, which was very passionate, quite political, quite different, much more sober, although he was drunk, than much of what had come before, excepting maybe Adrian Mitchell's and, well, I did an anti-bomb poem. It was a very varied evening, but my point is, it had all these ingredients, dance, the coming together of people who suddenly realised they were as one person, and some had communicated through little mags, cranked out on Gestetners, some had given readings together. And there was a huge sense of connectedness, um, intermedic, but before digital media. So although technologically I'm still completely out of it, I can't switch on a computer, I don't like looking at the screens for long, because they give my tired old eyes migraine, so I rely on printouts, which we're all guilty about because we want to save trees, then even the printouts are surrounded with advertising and stuff that pisses me off. You know, why have advertising? D. H. Lawrence. It is extraordinary, this stuff about political parties need money to advertise. What we surely need is politicians' poets just say what they've got to say. And that's the advertisement. If, if it all has to be set up with loads of money, all we ever continue talking about is money, and currently lack of money. And who needs to talk about that any longer? We've better things to do in it. Mm -hmm. So, on the other hand, I'm delighted that digital media equip the likes of you and people younger than you, grandchildren of Albion. I've published the anthology Grandchildren of Albion in the early 90s for the next generation of newer, younger poets. My son, Adam Horowitz, John Hegley, Melanie Abrahams and I are co-editing The Great Grandchildren of Albion, but given, as ever, it's hard for the likes of us to get funding, by the time that finally staggers out, if I live long enough, it'll be time for The Great Great Grandchildren of Albion, who are already banging on the door, doing their self-publishing on new digital media, getting their own stratospheric fifth dimension poetry with music, with computer, with space travel, without knives and without political or arts council approval. There you go, Arctic monkeys eat your hearts out. Poets are on the warpath. Mental war, not corporeal and all the old crap, thank you.